Ladies and gentlemen, Tony Mui here coming to you from the quarantine bunker. Thank you to everyone who has been tuning into all the sneaker battles week in and week out. Today, we bring you the season finale. And what better way to close it out than to invite two legendary sneaker aficionados to the battle stage. In one corner, every time the word sneaker collection comes up, this man's name always rings bells. He's top two, and he's not two. Algaro, Mayor is here to battle. And in the other corner, he is an underground king, one half of UGK, the trillest of OGs. Bum B is here to battle. And of course, my guy Jose is here to provide secondary market prices to give the viewers some insight on how these kicks either appreciated or depreciated over time. Bun, your opponent is regarded as one of the greatest collectors of all time. How are you feeling heading into this battle? I just want to keep it as close as possible. I, I expect Mayor to win this battle. I'm not just going to give him the battle, right? Like, he's got to beat me. He's, he probably will be, but he's going to have to fight. He's going to have to fight. A humble man, but we need a little more confidence, a little more fight in you, Bun. No, no, the confidence, the shoes are here. Like, I got to beat. Absolutely. Mayor, you probably have a better sneaker archive than Nike headquarters. What makes Bun B a notable opponent? If you believe anything Bun just said, you guys are all crazy. I'm just letting you know right now. Bun is going to pull out some stuff. Okay. Don't keep it a kid friendly show until he makes me go, oh crap, in a minute. All right, gentlemen, the rules are simple. This is a five round battle. Each round will tackle a different category. Both battlers will show off their shoes at the same time from the count of three, okay? Round one, show off your best unreleased Jordan in three, two, one, show. Holy cow. Bun, we'll start off with you. Justin Timberlake and Jay-Z went out on tour. It's called the Legends of Summer Tour. And so Jordan Brand made them some sneakers specifically for that tour. But right before they got ready to go out on the road, Hove signed an exclusive deal with Converse to so only wear Converse on that tour. And so I was able to get a couple of the pairs that were supposed to be for Hove to wear on the tour. Out of everything I got, this one is probably the most exclusive. I know a couple of people with, with shoes from that pack, but most of them don't have this shoe. I'm working with the suede, new buck, Jordan, uh, sample. I've only seen three pair in existence. I've seen myself, Jay-Z, and Michael Jordan with them. Probably the only people I've ever seen with them. I mean, I've been offered all kind of money for this shoe right here off my feet. Self-explanatory. Have you worn those yet? Yes, I wore them for a photo shoot once. Very nice. All right, do you guys have any honorable mentions? Are you showing off now? <laughs> Oregon Tinker. Holy cow. Self-explanatory. University of Oregon hang tag. Did Tinker FedEx that over to you overnight? Actually, I did get it from Tinker. But well, not overnight, but I did get it from Tinker. Shout out to Tinker. Wow, <laughs> big flex, big flex. Yeah, I'm supposed to go up against a dude that gets his shoes from Tinker. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll start with Bun on this one. So the Legends of Summer Jordan 2 I found on average is around eight grand. Super special. Wow. Here's something you always see behind the glass case when you go to Flight Club LA. For Mayor, very hard to find that pair. People don't shoot the messenger. There's one old article I found that said people were offering up to $3,400 for it, but I know it's worth a lot more. Round two, show off your best SB dunk in three, two, one, show. Mm. Okay, Mayor, please entertain us. Paris dunk. Very, very limited going for it. I've seen some crazy numbers on this thing. Now, what I did to mine, I actually put an Air Force bottom on mine. So I didn't know when I was going to take this one out and disqualify myself. But when I actually got it, it was just dunk. I was hanging out at the Nike kitchen one day and we were playing around and they was like, yo, we're going to put an Air Force bottom on your shoe. And I'm like, yeah, right. So they did it for me and it came out crazy. But originally, this is what it is and this is what the bad boy is. And it's an $80,000 shoe, folks. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, have you gotten a lot of backlash from that? Uh, yeah, yeah, but at my point, it's my shoe. I don't care what anybody says. Okay. All right, Bun B. You know, this one has sentimental value to me. This is the De La Soul Dunk Low. I got this from De La, from Paz. It's just a beautiful shoe. I love the suede toe box. If you look on it, it has graphics from the first De La Soul album, Three Feet High and Rising. I I've never won this shoe. Okay, respect. Oldie but a goodie. 
Right. Yeah. And then I brought my, then my honorable mention would have been my favorite SB, which doesn't even count for nobody. My Papa Bear highs are my favorite SB. Mm. I love to wear these in 90 degree weather with shorts on. <laughs> it's my favorite shirt. Jose, talk to me. All right, I'll start with Mayor on this one. I'm sure you've gotten offers for that is around $80,000 for that shoe, but if the earth being swapped, soul swapped, I don't know how that affects the value at all. It might be more valuable, less valuable. You can't put a number on that. And then Bun, same situation. That shoe alone is reselling for around 350, but with your story, having it being given to you by the members, obviously that adds way more value to that sneaker. I can't really put a number on yours either because of something signed memorabilia in that case, like it's gotta be worth a lot more than that. So I think both of these rule each other up. All right, gentlemen, before we get into the next round, what sneaker kickstarted this passion for collecting and footwear? Growing up, I grew up very poor. Um, my mother bought me a pair of sneakers called a Mark V. It was a cheap skippy. I thought I was cool because my name is Mark. So I thought I had my name on the shoe. I thought I was the flyest guy in the world. And I went outside and the kids started laughing at me. They, they laughed me off the block. Like, oh, you got skippies that cost a dollar ninety nine. They was making fun of me. And I was literally getting into fist fights over there. And I went upstairs and crying and asking my mom, how could she do some shit like that to me? Like, not like that, but I said, how could you do some stuff like that to me? And I was embarrassed. And then from that day on, when I was sweeping floors in the barbershop, packing bags in the grocery store for quarters, making dimes, or stealing money from my grandfather to buy sneakers, that's what it became. And it's never stopped since then. What about you, Bumby? Very, very similar story with Mayor. I grew up very poor. Um, after my parents divorced, it was just me and my mom, and she didn't really have money for that kind of stuff. So I basically used to wear Pro Wings from Payless. And then when the Jordan 1s came out, I was like, yo, I want this shoe. So I literally was doing people's homework, taking tests, giving dudes like answers for tests for money. And I basically saved up enough money to get the, um, to get the Jordan 1. and. It, it was a while until I got another shoe of that caliber, but that was like, for me, like, I was like, yo, as soon as I give me some real money, I'm gonna buy all the shoes I want. And to my wife's regret, I am. <laughs> <laughs> well, we appreciate it, because without those stories, this battle would not be happening today. So thank you guys for that. All right, gentlemen, let's Proceed to round three. Show off your best sneaker with a musical artist collaboration. In three, two, one, show. Oh, okay. Bun, let's go with you. This is the Eminem 4 Carhartt. This shoe was originally made to coincide with the 8 Mile movie. Of course, it's the Carhartt 4, so the entire upper is made of Carhartt material. It's got the Slim Shady mask on the back of one and um, the Eminem uh, E logo on the back of the other one. Man, listen, I'm still stuck on Bun Shoe because I've never begged for a shoe in my life. I begged everybody I knew a Shady for that shoe and never got it. I'm gonna take this in total. <laughs> <laughs> Here goes my Red October. I played it safe, I pulled something out there. The demographic here is young to old. Everybody loves this shoe, everybody like, you know what I'm saying? So I figured I'd pull it out and- That's the one I didn't get. It's the one you didn't get. You want to trade? Yeah. <laughs> I can get another one of these. You want to trade? <laughs> Ooh. Okay. Yeah, I like then I had an Interscope Jordan 1, a Jordan 4, Interscope Records. Right. That's crazy. I'll start with you, Bun. So that shoe, obviously super rare, usually around $20,000 plus for those. I'm seeing 28,000 on some pairs and beautiful shoe too, along with the Encore M&Ms that they did and you know the blue pair and good to have in the collection. Rare. Those easy red Octobers, those are around 7,000. I've seen some pairs for 10,000 and then some ridiculous ass for like 25,000. But I think most people are getting those for around 7K. Round four, show off your best player exclusive sneaker in three, two, one, show. Ooh, hold on. All right, let's, let's go with Mayor. Craig Sega Jordan ones maybe five to 10 pair in existence. I've only seen three other people with them. I had to pull one out, I had to go. I never showed these. Beautiful. This is the CP 3.4. This was designed by me for Chris Paul for All-Star Weekend. Kevin Hart actually won the Celebrity All-Star Game that year in these. As you can see, um, it's a very Houston-centric shoot. So it's got a lot of the Astros accents on it with, from the colorway to the star on the tongue. But the star, instead of Houston, it has CP3 on there. 
And so there were only, I think, 23 of these. Dang. I didn't get one. <laughs> <laughs> Both of these pairs are so rare. You can't find these online. It's, it's one of those things that, again, if you see in flight club or stadium goods, these are something you would see with like a car price tag on them. Bun, you said there's 23 pairs of those. Of course, maybe those Craig Sagers are, are, you know, you can't put a price on something like that. It's too high. So, all right. So, maybe it, worth, you know, maybe worth the Honda, maybe worth, you know, uh, like the C Class Mercedes, something like that. But that's definitely high price material. All right. Let's move on to the final round. Round five. This round is called Battler's Choice. Whatever heat you want to show off to go against your opponent, now is the time to do it. Three, two, one, show. Oh my, why, Mayor? Yeah, see, again, it's, it's, it's all cheat code with me. It's all cheat code. With me. All right, Bun B, can we start off with you first then, Bun? All right, this is the Dizzy Rascal Dirty State Nike Air 1A. This was designed by Dizzy Rascal and Ben Drury. And I believe I'm the only person in America to have these shoes. So for those that don't know, Dizzy Rascal is an MC from London. And the reason I love these so much is the package. So you got the, you know, got different accents from the city, the train that goes through the city, but then it had like a clear plastic cover on it. So the shoe kind of slides in and out of like the sleeve. All right, Mayor, <laughs> you revealed it with a full bent. Talk to me. I've been doing that for years. I've been bending these because that sneakers are just, you know, my scenario to the to whatever you call it they were. Sneakers are only work what our stupid asses are willing to pay for them, right? So I you know, undefeated Jordan 4, rumored to be 72 pair in existence. Um, I think there's more, who knows? Re-released a couple times. I and mean, they remade them a couple times, they never hit the streets. This is one of the original pairs. Shout to Undefeated. And uh it's one of my babies. All right, let's say you didn't have that shoe. What would another battler's choice be? I was going to do this. Oh, is Bun looking? Bun better. He don't, he don't want to look at this. <laughs> he don't want to look at this. He knows what I was going to do. He don't want to look at this. Would you want that shoe? I, I, I would want it, but I would keep it way, way in the back. <laughs> <laughs> so this is going to be my other one. I think, again, we're ruling both these as invaluable. I mean, I've seen the prices for the undefeateds go up. Those are around twenty thousand, sometimes fifty thousand dollar shoe. And then Bun, that sneaker is untraceable. You can't find it anywhere, man. Like that, you know, you can find the brown pair. I think PJ bought them in sneaker shopping on his second episode. And again, that was super rare. But I've never seen the white pair, so can't put a price tag on that. That's invaluable. When Bun pulled out the Jordan Two Legend or something, I was gonna pull out the Jordan One. But I thought you had this one. I do, but okay, but, but, but I know that I know that almost no one has the two. I got a bunch of other shit for the PE. I was gonna go here, and this ain't no Jordan Eleven. <laughs> Ooh, a I, I had to collect Jordan One. Like I was gonna go. Nope. I, didn't, like, I, I, I was just gonna. I was gonna go. I I was definitely loaded up. I ain't gonna lie. To you. That's one of the most Bun, beautiful shoes ever. I know, right. Bun, I'm a, I know Bun was gonna come and just. You know, I'm the one that used to box, but I know Bun was coming with the haymakers and uppercuts, so. I'm just, I'm just trying to keep up, right? That's all I told him. I said, I just want to keep up. If I did this, I wanted to do it with somebody that I have a relationship with, so it would be fun and entertaining. And it's for the people that everybody quarantined up there. That concludes another episode of Sneaker Battle from Home. And that is the season finale. Um, gentlemen, before we get out of here, would you guys like to plug anything that you guys have going on right now? I got some new music getting ready to come out. Um, I got an album with me and Maddie Fresh um, that's going to be coming out probably in the next month or two. I'm trying to get that out as soon as possible. And then right behind that, I have a new album with uh, Zayn Token. Mm, nice, nice, nice. So be looking for those. Um, you know, I, I'm, I'm sitting here, I'm sitting on this good music. I can't drop it like I wanted to. So I'm going to just give it to the people, put it out there. Man. Very well said from the Underground King. Uh, Mayor, anything you want to plug? I want Bun B to let me Dame Dash one record one time in my life. I just want to talk shit on one of Bun's records like in the background, just talk a whole bunch of shit. I can do that. I can, I can do that. <laughs> there you guys have it. Thank you for watching. Leave in the comments below who won this battle. And also, it, it's just a showcase at the end of the day, right? We're here to make content. Thank you guys for watching and uh, we're out of here. See you next time. Peace. <laughs>